My name is Ed Piscor. I'm Jim Rugg. We're going to be looking at it. We got a treat for you today, K Fabers. Looking through uh, the complete works of Bill Watterson's Calvin and Hobbes. But first, what you got, Jim? Patreon.com slash Jim Rugg. You can go there and download some of my out of print zines and mini comics like Fangirl Gang. Yeah, Fangirl Gang. Uh, this is the first rise time I ever touched a risograph. So it's a collection of drawings featuring. Uh, Maya character, Street Angel, but also characters like Elektra, wrestlers, uh, things of that nature. But really, this was my excuse to get to play with an actual risograph machine. And as such, this is one day's work with that machine. I only made like 40 of these. Hard to get a hard copy, but you can download it uh, along with the original art at my Patreon. And I have several of these kinds of zines and mini comics, lots of comic book art, scripts, process, templates, all that good stuff. Patreon.com slash Jim Rugg. Let's be incongruent for a second here, but <laughs> I got my own Where's the Hustle. That's and, a contrast. Yes, sir. And uh, it's official right now. Uh, Red Room Issue 1 is available for pre-order from Fantagraphics at this very moment. We ha we each have link trees below the descriptions of our videos uh, to go to all of our stuff. And there's a link to the Fantagraphic Fantagraphics website. Get your hands on a pre-order of this. Uh, my comics are always underprinted and always go to reprints very rapidly. If you want that first printing, you got to make sure you talk to your comic shop, pre-order it by any means necessary. Do what you can because you don't want to miss out whenever the movie comes out and you didn't grab the first print of Red Room Issue 1 just like you didn't uh, grab the first print of like Walking Dead Issue 1. You might want to pre-order a couple of them with that in mind. Absolutely, Get man. these things slapped. Give them to your freaking <laughs> nephew who is a little, <laughs> little, little creep, man, because it'll steer them in a direction. And uh, for the early adopters who can't wait for the print edition, patreon.com slash edpiscor. It's in that link tree as well. Three bucks to get you the archive. Uh, the first couple issues are up there as uh, of this recording. And uh, new strips every Tuesday. Now, that the gore is out of the way, Jimmy, let's take a look at the uh, complete works of uh, Bill Watterson's Calvin and Hobbes. Like a solid 10 years of impeccable cartooning. Strong from the start. Did a couple Calvin and Hobbes uh, videos before but got hold of the uh, the complete works. See, I got the uh, I got the layaway version, Jimmy, because it's a soft cover, four <laughs> volumes. There's like a two volume giant hardcover that I actually don't know how you're supposed to comfortably read in bed. <laughs> uh, it's pretty much why I chose these options because even this is still a pretty big uh, chunky book. But one of my favorite practices is to is to take a look at the complete works of the cartoonists that I really like. T like to take a look at some of the early period, take a look at some of the late period, see how they excelled it creates a form of inspiration inside of me. Makes me feel like if I keep working hard, I uh, don't get um, too kind of self-indulgent, start believing the hype. Uh, I'll be able to just get better at, at drawing, at making comics. We talk about process a lot on this show. That is a lesson everybody that wants to draw or make anything should take to heart. Yes. Because, you know, you keep plugging away at it. Whether it's learning a musical instrument, learning to draw, making your own comics, it's going to get better. Like it's, it's, you know, you do this every day, you work at it every day and uh, you'd be surprised how much you can grow in a year. The comics tell the story here. The comic strips tell the story here. There is a reasonably substantial uh, introduction that Watterson writes about kind of like his, his uh, trajectory going from, uh, you know, college to getting like editorial cartooning positions where, he, you know, his point of view was never, getting approved to get bought. So, you know, he lost that job, uh, goes up to, uh, this actually made me think of you in a way, but like when we first connected, you had that graphic design position and we're doing comics also. And that was what he was doing, except he was designing ads for like grocery store circulars and stuff. So like, where do you arrange the 99 cent sign next to the head of lettuce? I get compared to Watterson all the time. <laughs> <laughs> and at a certain point when he finally starts to sell these things, uh, get, make sure you grab four whenever the time comes. Um, whenever he started to, uh, you know, sell the syndicates on some ideas, they were pretty receptive. And here's a here's a proto Calvin uh, strip right here. He he did like a spaceman spiff kind of strip where with like an adult character, mm -hmm. and this would have been like a satellite character to go along with that. The editors, uh, you know, have a lot of you know, good in input. One of the things they said, listen, if the eyes are the window to the soul, why are you covering the eyes on your main character? Like, let's let's get some emotion. Worth noting the creativity of Watterson, too. He's not copping out with a full moon. 
<laughs> Great inking from the start, though. That very energetic line it, it makes you think of like Harriman. Yes. Yeah. I mean, one of his, you know, one of his big influences, uh, he lists is, is Pogo, Crazy Cat, and Peanuts. Crazy Cat, of course, being Harriman with that lively line work. And, you know, one of the things that Watterson and Calvin and Hobbes is known for is his ability to draw. Not all comic strips are drawn well, especially tiny reproduction in newspapers. Lots of ways you can skin the, the comic strip cat. In the case of Watterson, the guy's a virtuoso with a pen. Yeah. I mean, just like he's developed his language and can draw any object, anything within the parameters of the language that's, that he's established. It's incredible. The mark of the great cartoonist. Absolutely. And, and you'll see it in, uh, in, in these stylists. You know, you see Mike Mignola can draw a chair. Yes. And you know it's him. It's a Mike Mignola chair. Like, section off any, you know, quarter of a panel. And, like, with almost everybody, you, if you see a face, you could tell. But let me say that clock on a wall. Oh, yes. that's, Dan Klaus drew that. Yeah. Pretty, once again, pretty substantial. This is the kind of stuff that he's doing these days, man. Just uh, going out, doing... Uh, he, he mixes mediums, goes out, he paints, and he's learning music, piano. You know, stretching his creative chops, doing, giving himself some new hard challenges. And, uh, like, I'm interested in painting, Jimmy. I get frustrated when the shit doesn't come out as good as, like, the drawings that I've... Sure taught myself to do over all these years and, and I and I quit you know he sticks with it uh, but talks about like when he first started doing Calvin and Hobbes took six months to get into his own paper so so he didn't even have any conception of like what was happening it didn't feel real to him that it wasn't in his regular paper but he had his day job still and uh, thankfully he said um, the day job paid so poorly that after about six months it equaled the yes. crappy uh, job that he had. So he decided, rather than just like double the income and burn that candle at both ends, uh, going to give it a go on the comic strip because I don't want uh, this thing to have failed because I didn't put yes. in all my energy. Yeah, I remember when I quit my day job, and it's the same kind of deal. It's like my goal was to make comics full-time, and when I had enough work, you sort of have to take that chance. Jimmy, that shit was so cool, man, because I was there for that. And, and for Tom, you know what I'm saying? And it was when when you guys made those announcements at, at different times, it was a celebration that night. You know what I mean? It's like you gotta you gotta take that chance. You got it's good good to do it when you're young enough without too many big responsibilities. Take the freaking shot, shoot your shot. Uh everybody's entitled to take the shot. But and, it's for that same reason that you list with Watterson. Like you don't wanna look back and think I just didn't do it. Right. I had it. I, had, I could have maybe, and I didn't. Shoot the shot, man. And, yeah. Uh, you only live once. You mentioned, uh, you know, you mentioned Harriman earlier as a as an influence, and I mentioned Schultz. Yeah. And I think you can really see the peanuts in something like that. And it's it's really the joy. You know, it's such a. Uh, we've said this before because we have looked at his work. We've read interviews with him on the show. It's uh, it's something I read for mental health. Sure. <laughs> you know, like there's there's nothing I can think of that would be better than, than reading this stuff. And whenever we get into Calvin and Hobbes, it's always a good week. You know, if I'm capping my days by reading a, a batch of these things, I go to bed very happy. Right. <laughs> uh, you know, and you see it. You see it in these things. And I think that's really what Calvin and Hobbes expressed more than almost anything else. Like we all love the drawing, but it really is this sense of joy, you know, that childhood wonder and exuberance that I, I think people responded to in the huge numbers that they responded to. If you and I were tasked with that, oh, you'd all speak for myself. Uh, he taps into some stuff that I just have forgotten about in, in, when it comes to childhood. And yeah. it's like, I don't, how do you even tap into that? Baloney brain. <laughs> <laughs> Once again, great lettering. When we see these Sundays, beautiful application of color. Yes. Interesting colors. Standout colors. Uh, secondary colors that are divorced from every other strip on that page. Very true. You know, like they're all they're all um going for the easy pop, we'll call it, man. Primary colors, super bright, 100% plates if possible. It's not one of them used on this page. You see him now as like a, a plain air painter or something. It's almost like you can reverse engineer it when you see some of these Sunday pages and it's like, oh yeah, this guy's really interested in color. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So this is, you know, the first year's worth of work, man, and it starts off freaking strong sure it's hey as competitive a business as there is 
So, you know, if you can make it into this past that first round to the publication, to the beginning of syndication, you are already at a certain very high level. Yeah. Yeah. When, when the paper's got to start downsizing or fresh strip comes in or they need to cut back a little bit, it ain't going to be peanuts. It's going to be the first one. It's going to be the rookie unless you show and prove. Anyhow, this is the first batch, right? Let's take a look uh, through the last year of his work, man. He takes a sabbatical uh, a bunch of years down the road, maybe maybe halfway through his career. When he comes back, while well, the newspapers are already like, we missed you, man, like, and kind of mad that he went away because it was such a popular strip. It's almost a different cartoonist, like the confidence to go to do this kind of stuff. And it's really fun to look from the first year or two of his strips to this stuff, because this is a guy that knows what he's doing and has spent 10 years thinking about it right. and honing that craft. And man, that's a dramatic jump to go from volume one to volume four and really see like, wow, you know, it looked great in the beginning and you see this and it's a whole nother level of just perfection. Perfection is a good word. And if you think of this as a musical instrument, it really is like that kind of level of, think of all the tools you have in a comic strip. And he, he is just playing them perfectly. He cites these... Uh, wow. <laughs> like, look at that, right? That's wild. What a concept. These um, Sunday strips for all of his perfectionism. And you know how artists can be self-effacing and hate hate their work? He says he's, pr he's proud of these Sundays, man. So he, yes. in all of his self-effacement, all of his uh, self-flagellation... He recognizes these are dope. He fought to be able to do this. And, uh, you know, he had ideas. Uh, oh, man, it's so cool. Yeah, every single one, like, is is strong. Yeah, and his ability to draw everything, too. We see so much of just a couple of characters, you know, in a daily strip. And he would take those Sundays and just draw everything. Cities and roads, landscapes and pff, dinosaurs. Always good when you got a dinosaur one. Yes. Walt Simonson's favorite Sunday. <laughs> Look at that watercolor boy. Yeah, that's Depth the other field. piece that's starting to come up. Depth of field, man. Just just ink the, the hard lines on the characters. Not even complete all the lines. We're in the final year here, and he had taken another, you know, you said he took a couple sabbaticals. One of the sabbaticals was uh, before this final year. And during that time, he decided he was ending it and came back for one more year. So, I mean, this is really like, imagine that too. You've got 14 years of thinking about these characters in this strip, and now you've got to... Whatever you have left to say, this is the time to do it. Whatever ideas you had for layouts or concepts or jokes, you know, you got to get it in there. One of the sort of strengths of uh, the, the cartooning uh, process is that the work does have to go through a bunch of hands before it, uh, it sees print, right? So uh, you have an opportunity to do your swan song at the very end. And, and what I'm saying is um, in radio, like... You are not, like, they don't tell you that it's your last day because they don't want you on that live microphone talking some smack. Uh, so it's like these graceful end notes to these cartooning careers, man. And I keep shifting because I just want to make sure we get the Sundays in there real good. Yeah. They're such a pleasure to look at. I saw a diagram for how, like, the Sundays had to be laid out. Yeah. Uh, in order to allow papers to shift things around, run it two thirds instead of a full half or whatever. Um, and it's, it's, that's pretty interesting in its own right, but it is formulaic. You know, things have to fit at certain break points. Right. Look at the color on that. If, yo, that's he, bold. He borrowed that from Kevin Nolan. <laughs> he, Big he, fan of the Batman Outsiders he, 1986 he, he, annual. He got the Kevin <laughs> Nolan palette. It's, you, that sells night, man. Yeah, it's great. I love when people do night and they and they find the colors to do it, you know, not just black ink. Love that stuff. Super inventive. Yeah, and this shows off his drawing ability too, where it's like, okay, now we're looking at like a kid drawing style. Kid lettering style. Awesome. You know, that lettering is divorced from this. Operation Kapow. Top secret. It's brilliant stuff. Which, of course, we aren't uncovering. You know, I know. Widely regarded. Beautiful but fall I, I, colors. But I do think seeing the contrast between the beginning and the ending is really effective. We're getting there, Jimmy. It's different ways to read this stuff, too. You know, um, because all those collections, like, pick up any Calvin and Hobbes collection, it's great. Yeah. One of the benefits of having it complete and printed in chronological order is that ability to see progression. We're getting to the last one, Jimmy. Makes me sad. What a rich piece of comics. Is that the last daily? 
right there. Man, there it is, man. And this was, uh, it was all building to this, you know, like there were articles in the newspaper about, you know, Calvin Hobbes coming to the end, man, last day of December, December, 1995. And here it is. Super strong piece. I love thinking about how you get to see the, the cartoonist mindset where their head is in, in some of these strips. And it's hard not to see that here. I you know. know, he's wrapping up 15 years of a daily. I mean, it's, it's a grind. You can read interviews with him or any cartoonist that talks about it. That's, it's hard, time-consuming work. And after this, who knows what he's going to do? Let's go explore him, And baby. he captures that. It's, it's, it's awesome. Let's go plein air painting and learn how to, learn how to do some ragtime. Wow. Humbling. It is humbling. I'm but also, again, it's, it, it makes me grateful that this stuff exists. You know, sure. like nothing lasts forever. So you find these treasures, these moments, and it's like, we can revisit this. Everybody watching this video, go read Calvin and Hobbes. I promise you'll feel better after you read some. <laughs> if, if he continued to do it throughout the years, I'm sure it would have stayed at a, at a super high level. But good on him, man, to like let this thing stop at the top, man. Yeah, again, it's un that's un-American. Like people will look at an actor like uh, Christopher Lloyd or something and be like, "What a fucking loser! He hasn't made a movie in twenty years." And it's like, you know what? The sick person is Tom Cruise. <laughs> <laughs> the sick person is Tom Cruise, who has to like always be at the center of attention all the time. This is a very reasonable person, man. That could tap the table, get up, go live life. Yeah, good for him. Good, Jimmy? I am. All right, let's get out of here, man. K favors, like, follow, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Hit the bell. We'll notify you when new vids are available. What you got, Jimmy? Patreon.com slash Jim Rugg, where you can find out-of-print zines, mini-comics, original art, script process, notes, all of those kinds of things. Patreon.com slash Jim Rugg. Issue 1 of Red Room is out for pre-order. It's going to come out in, in May of this year. It's going to be a monthly comic. It's going to be a self-contained comic, so every issue tells its own story. And uh, you could pre-order it at the link below this video at my link tree uh, by way of the Fantagraphics website. And uh, if you want to take a quick peek, uh, read the comics uh, online, uh, patreon.com slash edpiscor. Three bucks will get you the archive. And I put new strips every, every Tuesday. There are two issues up there uh, as we speak. What else we got, Jimmy? Subscribe to the Cartoonist Kayfabe e-newsletter at the links below this video to keep up with everything we have going on, and it is going to be a big year for Cartoonist Kayfabe, so you want to keep up to date. You can also find Cartoonist Kayfabe t-shirts and merchandise at the links below this video. Give them one more set of marching orders, Jimmy. We're going to be on our way. Read more comics.